And welcome to another Cardinal's Nest. This is the sports show where we talk St. Mary's University Athletics. I'm the faculty athletics uh, representative, Dean Beckman, joined by my co-host once again, our sports information director, Donnie Netto. We are coming to you from the Jerry and Pat Pappenfuss Multimedia Lab in Aquinas Hall on the campus of St. Mary's University. And Donnie, uh, it's been a busy couple of weeks <laughs> for St. Mary's and springtime is always a wild card, right? It is. And I think uh, this year has certainly been no exception to that. Uh, maybe w uh, wilder of a wild card than ever before. Yeah, I think you know I've, I've had people ask me if this is the if this is the worst spring we've had in terms of weather, and I don't think it is. I mean, I think three four years ago we still had snow at this time of the year, but right now, I mean, you you just look at baseball. They they were supposed to play Augsburg a week ago Tuesday. It's been canceled five times, so it's it's just been that kind of a year, you know. I'm I'm looking forward to having uh, Coach Hallberg on from the tennis team, and we can talk about the luxury of being able to play indoors and not have to worry about all of this, uh, you know, this craziness that is uh, uh, rescheduling. And mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I know the baseball team is playing today as we tape this, and it's uh, 39 degrees <laughs> with a wind chill of about 20, and they're going to be playing baseball today. Right, so and it's been pretty crazy. You're just glad it's not a home game. Yes, Otherwise, you'd I be am. out there doing <laughs> stats, right? Yes, I am. <laughs> but yes, we'll have Jeff Hallberg on, our men's and women's tennis coach, a little bit later on in the program, and check in with the tennis teams on campus. But first, a recap of this past week in sports, and we'll begin with baseball, since as you mentioned, Donnie, they're playing today. Uh, uh, they're coming off a couple of games against St. Olaf, where they had a win and a loss. So they're getting in some games here and there. They had an exciting uh, extra inning win over St. Olaf, 5-4, to four, and then uh, lost to St. Olaf in the second game, 9-0. Yeah, nothing. It was that the first game was was amazing. I mean, uh, you, you, you battle back and, and battle back, and you get a, uh, an RBI single from Bob Tillett in the uh, in the 10th inning to, to get the win in game one, and then uh, they kind of fell asleep in game two and, and were one hit by a, a really good St. Olaf pitcher. Um, Sam Westermeyer is a phenomenal pitcher and, 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 he, and he held, uh, held us to one hit over, over seven innings and, and uh, so we took the split. You know, I think that any time, uh, Coach Winkie wants to win every game. Mm -hmm. Actually, every coach wants to win every game. But I think if you can split at worst, I think you're doing okay, and you're going to be sitting right there talking about get, uh, getting into the into the postseason. And right now, with uh, you know the way things are going and the way uh, games are starting to get packed in together, uh, it's going to be important to to be able to do that. To get at least one win every time you play an opponent is going to is going to put you in good position. I'm not saying it's going to guarantee mm -hmm. you a, a spot in the four team tournament, but uh, it's going to keep you in position. And and right now, that's what they've got to do. They've got a, a, a lot of games coming up, and and it's going to be. Uh, uh, pretty crazy. I know Coach Winnicky spends more time on the Weather Channel than he probably does. Uh, good thing he has assistants that can study the uh, the opponent because he's worried about uh, about whether they're going to get to play or not. Right. And you know, as you said, getting at least a win every time out. That's pretty much exactly what's been happening overall. They're 11 and 10 this year, so a little bit above 500. More importantly, though, of course, in the conference, they're off to a three and one yeah. start. Yeah, and they're playing very well, and they got the sweep over St. Scholastica. And that's as as you say, if you can get split at worst, you know, you pick up a couple sweeps here and there, and you're and you're sitting very good. And and I think that at at, at this time of the year, you really kind of throw the overall record out the window. Mm -hmm. You know, when we had Coach Winicky on. He schedules a very tough non-conference schedule, so you may look at that and say, "Well, they're only 11 and 10, and that's not so good." But you know, they play some very good opponents and uh, get themselves ready for the conference. And then when they play conference, sitting at three and one after four games is a, is a good yeah. spot to be. Uh, a team that's been extremely busy as of late has been softball. They're off to a very good start this year, 11 and nine overall. Four and five in conference plays, and and they've had a lot of games recently. They uh, knocked off, or uh, they lost to Saint Olaf nine to one. Uh, then they lost ten to two. They beat Hamlin six to two, um, and then it got suspended in a tie game against Hamlin yeah, it's three been three. A, it's been a crazy, it's been a crazy time for them, and and I think that you know you look at you look at this team, and I think that this year is just. It's such a learning experience for for everybody, not only for the players with a new coach, but the new coach coming back to uh, to St. Mary's and, and 
you know, kind of readjusting from where he was to to uh, the expectation and, and what he has now. So I think that the, it's going to be a learning curve this year, and, and uh, you know, they're exciting to watch. It was great to see him at home uh, um, on Saturday against Carlton, and and then uh, you know they they take off and go out and go on the road. So it's uh, you know it's it's exciting. It's fun to see them play well. They've got a lot of new faces. I know that. Uh, um, Sarah Krause is doing a phenomenal job in the in the pitcher circle for for St. Mary's, and they've got a lot of good players uh, that are new. You know, new this year. Riley Hall decided to come out this year and has just been phenomenal. I mean, mm -hmm. she's just she's just tearing it up, hitting about 500. And and Sophie Cave is doing a great job. And then you mix in some of the the, the returners that are that are that are also finding their niche and finding their spot with this with this group and, and are doing a very good mm -hmm. job. And, and I think that, that that's the key. You know, Cassie Suter's really coming on. It's a little bit of a slow start for her, but uh, now has really been uh, been hitting the cover off the ball and doing a, a, a great job. And, and that's what they're gonna need. They, John's gotta find a way to put all the pieces together with what he has right now. And, and uh, I think that mm -hmm. that between players and, and coaches, I think everybody is really starting to mesh well right now. The nice thing for, for softball is this year, it's a six team tournament. So the, the, the softball has gone to a six-team tournament, but it's only single elimination. So we're going to get more teams in rather than the four-team usual where it's double elimination, right. but uh, you only get that, you know, right. one, one and chance. done. <laughs> one and done. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's just like anything. You look at if, if you can get into the playoffs, yep. anything can happen, right. especially in a one and done because, uh, you know, you run into a hot pitcher or a couple of, of, of sizzling bats and, and all of a sudden uh, you're, you're moving on to, uh, you know, to round two or, or on yeah. to the regionals. You know, you brought up that Carlton series here at home and that was kind of the start of one of their first batches of adversity this year where they went on kind of a four game losing streak. But what was impressive to me is they bounced right back against Hamlin, winning that first game yep. and then playing well in the second game before it got suspended. Yeah, and that's it's a, it's a crazy situation. They played very well. Um, I did watch the game online because it was on the road, but uh, they played very well in that opener against Hamlin. And you're right, you come you're coming off of of four losses, and and uh, you know you you get the bats going a little bit. That they had really struggled to score runs. Right, they almost scored as many runs in in that first game against Hamlin as they had right. in their in their four previous games. So, I think that's going to be important. They have to be able to bounce back. It's just like in in any sport, you have to be able to uh, you know to put the past behind, learn from it, and uh, and move forward. I know um, talking to, to Coach Cheetah, he had he had made the comment that you know what after the uh, after the um, the Carlton games, everybody's jerseys were still clean. He said. That's not good. You know, right. we're not, yeah, you we're don't not, want that. We're not yeah. making enough effort to, uh, you know, to, to, to play. And I think that that's, a, that's something that, you know, they're, they're kind of expected now is, hey, you've got to give 100, 110% and, and uh, get the jerseys dirty. That's, yeah. uh, you know, that's, that's a sign of, of putting in solid effort is you're making the diving plays and you're, you know, you're making the, the, the slides into bases and, and whatnot. And, and so, you know, the, they did more of that uh, against against uh, Olaf on Sunday, and then for Shirley, they did that on, on Monday against mm -hmm. Hamlin. Unfortunately, the second game got, got called <laughs> because of darkness. Yeah. Yes, yeah, busy time for our student athletes, for sure. And our last spring sport to talk about before we get to tennis is uh, track and field. And both the men's and women's track and field outdoor teams have started their action this spring. They were at the Washington University Invitational on April 2nd. And then on uh, April 9th, they went to the Ashton May Invitational in La Crosse. And so they're off to good yeah, starts. Yeah, and Coach Schneider's gotta be very happy with what he's seeing. And and uh, obviously in the outdoor season, the number one, a number one is gonna be Anna Swan. Uh, she won the javelin at the Ashton May. She was fortunate enough to go to the Texas Relays um, in late March and, and did very well there, placing 11th. She was the only Division Three athlete in the whole uh, competition, so she did very well there. Her throw there, uh, 42.99 meters, is number three in the country in Division Three. so mm -hmm. she's sitting in a great spot to make it back to, to nationals, and I know she'd love to, uh, you know, to improve on, hard to say, but improve on that second place <laughs> finish she had last year at the Nationals. Yeah. So, um, you know, she's she's right on pace with where, where I think she was expected. I think on the men's side, you've got a couple of hammer throwers in Sean Curran and Frankie Bacalars who are really doing outstanding outstanding things they did. I had a great indoor season with the weight throw and uh, now in the hammer um, are also doing very, very well. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. So yeah, it's exciting <coughs> to see that back going. They too will be busy. And then at the end of the year, St. Mary's is hosting the MIAC Outdoor Championship, which means a lot of extra <coughs> work me. for Donnie. Yes, a lot of a lot of work, but exciting. It's yeah. you know what? Anytime you can have the 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 conference come on your campus, and uh, you know we get to we get to showcase what we're able to do and the beautiful campus that we have and the, and the great track facility we have. So it's exciting. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a lot of work, not just for me, but for our entire staff and, and uh, really the entire school. But we're excited about it. And I think that uh, Coach Schneider has run some of these big events before. So uh, he brings a lot of experience there, which will which will certainly help us because I know there's gonna be a lot of questions <laughs> as we prepare for this, but uh, everybody's very excited about yeah, it. Yeah. And they're looking for volunteers. And so <laughs> our first time producer, Matt Klosky, who is a big supporter of St. Mary's University Athletics, uh, they are looking for volunteers. So talk to us afterwards. So <laughs> if someone's watching and they want to know how to volunteer, who do they contact? Uh, I would say sure Brian Sisser, sure Donnie, sure, contact sure Donnie. All right, all yep. right. <laughs> excellent. All right, uh, so before we uh, slide Jeff Hallberg in here, uh, we're going to talk about the upcoming week in St. Mary's Athletics. And with Easter break falling right now, it's maybe a little bit quieter than usual, Donnie, but uh, what are we looking yeah, at a little for? Yeah, bit, a little bit quieter, but still busy. As, as you can see there, we've got uh, the baseball team right now is playing is playing Bethel, um, as probably as we speak and, and as this is being taped. And uh, softball is, was supposed to play uh, River Falls on Friday, but we'll see if that happens. Uh, Augsburg, baseball against Augsburg has already been moved to Friday because of weather, and it's, it's uh, you know, going to be a day like today, so it's going to be cold and, and, and hopefully not rainy, but they will get that one in. Um, track and field, go to Coe College in Cedar Rapids, Iowa for the Ritgers Invitational, so that'll be good for them. And then we close out the weekend on Saturday, Baseball at home against uh, McAllister, and then and then the softball team is on the road at McAllister. Mm -hmm. So you're right; it's not necessarily a jam-packed week, but with the weather that we've had, everything <laughs> becomes condensed, yeah. and and it is jam-packed. Yeah, absolutely. And you add in the fact that uh, academically, when we get back from Easter break, uh, it's not too long before final exams, and everything kind of has to get done in right, between there. Right. It's, it's crazy. I mean, yeah. it's a, it, and and the more that we have postponed or canceled or moved, the harder it gets for just the reasons that you're saying. You've got, you know, you've got finals in there, you've got graduation in there. So there's a lot, a lot that has to happen in the next basically three weeks. Mm -hmm. yep. All right, we're going to turn our attention to tennis now. We have Jeff Hallberg, the head men's and women's tennis coach at St. Mary's joining us. Jeff, as always, thank you very much. And as you're listening to Donnie and I lament <laughs> about the uh, softball and baseball and track and field and weather, are you grateful for the indoor sport of tennis? Well, that's always helpful, yeah. It's, uh, you know, we don't have to worry about cancellations and things so much. So that's always nice to just be able to clip along with your season and not yeah. be interrupted. But the outdoor game is fun too, though, right? The it outdoor is. tennis and, and game. And honestly, I mean, we'd love yeah. to play a bit more outdoors. Um, you know, we've obviously we got that chance down in uh, uh, Orlando, yeah. and uh, we had a great uh, week then. And uh, we'd love to be able to bring our outdoor game uh, to bear in the conference. but. You know, but we'll see. It might it might happen on the last day for the for the guys. Uh, you know, when we play, go up to play Hamlin, hopefully we'll have a sunny day and be able to finish it in the sunshine. But you yeah, know, before we talk about the season, let's just stay on this topic because it, it always does interest me in that in that the outdoor game itself is so different than what you play indoors because indoors, I mean, you're you're quality controlled. There's no yeah. wind. There's no sun. There's no anything. Yeah. What's the biggest thing, especially because you don't do it very often during the year? You may do it, like you said, yep. you may do it against Hamlin. What kind of adjustments have to be made by your your athletes moving from indoors, where they've played predominantly the whole season, to uh, to moving outdoors? Sure. Well, I, I mean, you you tend to play a little bit more conservatively. Um, obviously, the more the worse the weather, the more that more that has to happen. If you get if you get especially the wind element, if that comes in to play, then that can really affect your game. Um, uh, and it can sometimes it'll play into the hands of particular players. For instance, a player that's a bit more effective on the defensive side, um, you know, is more of a works on um, their effectiveness is more through consistency than through aggressiveness. Well, it's hard to be aggressive when the the wind's blowing the ball around because <laughs> you know you want to hit the middle of the strings and it doesn't always happen. And so a defensive player is going to have a bit of an advantage there. So. Uh, but you know, on a really nice day, um, it, it won't affect you as much. 
but there's still even just just the spatial differences uh, can affect you because when you have when it's a wide open space the court literally looks smaller uh, than it does indoors indoors the court fills up the space and so you feel like you've just got acres to hit into but you go outdoors and suddenly the, f the court su suddenly you get this perception that the court looks smaller and you know, of course, it's a it's an optical illusion, but your brain has to get over that. You have mm -hmm. to you have to realize. Wait a second, no, it's the same size. It's not it's not <laughs> different. And uh, of course, and you'll get players that'll sometimes moan about whether it's the sun or <laughs> the wind. And I have to remind them that it's like, well, your opponent isn't playing indoors on the other side of the court. <laughs> you know, they're playing the same conditions, so they gotta you know they have to you know they have to kind of get their head around it on that you know that mental side and not just the the literal. Uh, issues of sun and wind. Yeah. So. When I used to play recreationally, I appreciated the wind because it was a built-in <laughs> excuse. I'm like, oh, I didn't hit that ah, darn wind. Oh, yeah. darn it. <laughs> um, your, your women's team, Jeff, let's start talking about them. They're off to a terrific start, 12 and 7 on the season, 4 and 5 in conference play. Uh, contributions from a lot of different athletes there. Yeah. Uh, what are you seeing on the women's side? Well, you know, one of our greatest strengths is that we're just a deep team. Um, you know, I, I can call on a number of different players to contribute uh, in singles. Um, uh, we have doubles combinations. We've, we've even adjusted doubles combinations on a number of occasions. Um, and we've had, we haven't had serious injury issues, but we've had some little tweaks here and there that have affected us. And we've had to, you know, we've had to react to that. And, and fortunately, we've got the depth in the women's side that uh, we pretty much just were able to keep rolling. And, and uh, so it didn't really affect results uh, necessarily. And, uh, and on top of it, the ladies have just had a great attitude the, whole, the entire time. It's really, it is a kind of a, you know, all for one and one for all uh, kind of approach. And uh, they've, so they've, you know, they've had good success. And, um, it, you know, we're in the conference race. Uh, there's no guarantees, but we knew from the first, first ball struck this season, we knew it was going to come down right to the end because the, the depth of the conference right now is, is really something, right? In that, that mm -hmm. middle pack, we're all just beating each other up, trying to fight our way in. Well, and, and I guess one of the advantages, disadvantages for you right now is next, uh, next Saturday is your final match for the women. Yes. And, you know, at least half of the conference has only got about half of their matches in so far. So when you finish, and you're going to finish at... Five and five. I'm already predicting a win for Saturday. Thank you. So you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> it's worked on this show. No so pressure, but no it has pressure. worked. But, yes. but <laughs> you're going to be sitting in a great spot in that in that you're done at five and five. And right now, like you said, there's four teams with four four wins right now. Correct. And so you're in a yep. you're in a really good spot if you beat Saint Scholastica. That really kind of knocks them down because they're at three wins right now. Right. Is it? Is it? Is it? I guess. This is the roundabout way to get to the question, but is it is it better for you to be sitting at five and five and be done and watch, or would you rather maybe be a little bit closer in terms of how many matches are still to be played when you finish out? Right. Well, I mean, you know, it's always nice to have control in your hands. You know, just go. You know, we win, we're in. That would be that would be great. But the reality is, people have been there. It's been a little unpredictable in the middle of the conference. So you know. Um, you know, we lost a couple of really close ones. I mean, the St. Ben's match, it was the, the score was a lie because it, so, it was much closer than it looked. Um, and then, of course, St. Olaf, we were within two points of beating them, and, but ended up on 4-5. But then we come back and win two, come from behind 5-4 wins against uh, Mack and, uh, and Bethel, and, which put us right back in the hunt. But would I prefer to just be able to just play and get in? Yes. Yeah. But on the other hand, um, I don't really worry about the stuff that's beyond my control. We're going to have to wait. A, we'll probably have to wait a week uh, if we get the result against Scholastica to find out if we're in or not. Um, but it's you know if we can get that result, at least at least we know we've done the job that we were you know we were put out to do and uh, given ourselves a fair chance. Well, so. you mentioned you mentioned the thing that I I've been waiting to talk to you about forever, <laughs> and that is McAllister and Bethel. Yeah, five four. Both come from behind wins. You need three singles wins. You get those three singles from the same three people. Yeah. I, it's just, it was just, to me, it was just, I had to relook at the score sheets to make sure that you didn't send me the same score sheet because right. it was identical. Can you just talk about about those two matches? Because two five four wins like that is, is just crazy. It is. And it, uh, certainly in just having them go back to back like that. Um, I, you know, I, in some ways, I thought that the second one partially happened because the first one happened. That... 
they, you know, we got to that point, but the gals on the court were like, well, we did it yesterday, we can do this, you know, and so they, they had the belief. Um, of course, Zoe is, has been just a rock solid, uh, consistent, and, um, you know, even when she dropped the first, this first uh, sets in both of those matches, there wasn't a time where we were like, well, this is, this is beyond her or anything like that, and she didn't feel that way either. She was just like, yeah, I just got to pick, pick up my game. I got to, you know, I got to get, make her play a little more. Um, with Kaylee, she had been out for a while. Um, she, uh, uh, so she had slowly kind of worked her way into doubles again because she was in the starting lineup from the start of the season. Uh, but then she, uh, she had an injury issue, was out for a little while, came back in doubles, and then we finally were able to get her enough singles time that she's like, I'm good to go, coach. I'm ready to, I'm ready to play. But of course, then it's like, you know, throw her to the wolves. It's like, okay, <laughs> two huge matches and there you go. Um, well, she was down 0-4 in the first set against, uh, against McAllister. And she just absolutely lit on fire and ran off 12 of the last 14 games to win the match, uh, which was fantastic. And I think she, that, that belief carried over to the next day because the next day she was playing <laughs> a very good player. It was very close the entire time. She actually had a match point against her in the second set tiebreaker, held it off, win the breaker, and then actually she, she played a brilliant third set, I, third set breaker. She, the, the match was over, basically. She just played uh, amazing tennis to finish it. And Emily, one of our greatest strengths for our team is that we're so deep. And Emily right. is an amazing player, and she's playing six. And so both matches, when we got to four all, we were like, I think we got this. And sure enough, Emily was able to you know, uh, get a fairly routine score on both sides. So it was, it was wonderful and it was amazing. And then I, you know, I went home and I slept for 12 hours. It was so stressful. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, you mentioned Zoe, uh, some really other, Emily Henderson has been fantastic for you. Natalie Peterson, Kennedy Morgan, as you said, it's such a deep team. And it seems like, um, and I believe you alluded to this already, kind of with the double side, you've been able to mix and match some different pairings in there. Talk about that a little more. Yeah, well, you know, it was one of the things we started off the season with uh, some different pairings. Uh, and we actually did, we did quite well at the start, but uh, we felt, um, we felt after the, you know, kind of leading into that weekend that we just weren't, uh, there, there wasn't quite the same, you know, fire. Uh, maybe we had just gone a little stale. And so, I, you know, I sat down with my two, two assistant coaches, uh, Dave Sunday and Jeff Biesick, and, you know, we were like, you know, we, we need to try something different. And, you know, the plus side of my team is that, honestly, I could put them with anybody in, in some ways. I mean, you, you, you can mix and match, and obviously you want to concentrate on who's going to be better at, you know, like the ad side or the do side. But in the end, uh, they are, you know, I, I would, if I asked them to play with anyone in the lineup, they'd be like, I'm good coach, let's go. And, uh, but I, I threw those, those, uh, those new pairings together um, and it just, oh, they, all three of them clicked. I mean, it was just, it was a wonderful, uh, you know, wonderful experience just watching it happen. And of course, Natalie and Emily at the top, they, they were playing uh, a couple of very strong teams. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we, uh, you know, so we had to make adjustments obviously from uh, Saturday to Sunday. Um, but th that, that was literally no warning. They didn't get to, pra obviously they didn't get to practice when I did that. It was just, we're doing d different teams. But they had worked with each other before in practice mm -hmm. and things like that. So it wasn't as new as it looked. Yeah. Um, but th their reaction was amazing. They just had, I mean, they, they literally, they were smiling and having fun on the court. And, and sometimes it takes that. Sometimes it just, you just try something different and suddenly you know everything's golden again sure uh, so yeah talk a little bit about the guys mm -hmm. uh, you, you've got one senior I guess we mm -hmm. first off we should mention that you have three graduating seniors which is certainly going to be tough uh, come next year in that in your on the women's side yep. uh, in uh, Kennedy and, and Kaylee and, and Sariana Hoffer yep. uh, one senior mm -hmm. on the men's side in Brandon Carilla it feels like he just got here <laughs> and, and he's already graduating, which is, is really crazy. But yeah. talk a little bit about, about the guys this year. I know it's been kind of a roller coaster ride, but then you almost expected that this year from this team. Yeah, uh, for sure. You know, we had, uh, we had, we, uh, you know, had kind of an unexpected uh, start with, uh, you know, some people that weren't able to, uh, to play this season. And so we had to adjust and we had to, we had to ask more of our freshmen than we had originally uh, expected. Um, but I've got to hand it to the, the returning players. They were so welcoming and encouraging to the freshmen. 
Um, uh, Brandon and Josh have done a great job as uh, captains. I mean, I've, I've even, we've kind of done a little bit of a mentorship thing uh, this year. And because uh, I've, always, I've always told the players that it, you know, honestly, it takes a village to, to create a, uh, a good team and a good team atmosphere. And so I said, you know, don't always expect it to, it shouldn't always land on the coach to do things. You guys experience this too, and you can share your experience. And uh, I mean, I'm like, for, just as an example, I had, uh, I, I took Brandon aside one day and I said, I want you to work with Caden Rodning on his kick serve. Just, I want you to just, because he did the same thing, he went through the same thing from his freshman year on, of learning to, you know, uh, hit a, an effective kick serve. And you could tell it wasn't just effective from the standpoint of just the, the practical showing, showing him how to do what we were asking him to do. Um, but the appreciation uh, of, you know, like, wow, my, my captain's actually giving me a tennis lesson right now. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, mm -hmm. he's taking time aside and saying, this is your day. This is about you. And that was really cool because the whole, the whole atmosphere of the team, you know, we could have obviously gone in going, wow, this is just going to be, this is going to be really hard. And, and the reality of it, certainly within the conference is, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be, yeah. <laughs> but you wouldn't know it from practices, from matches, their attitude has been absolutely flawless. I've, I, I've enjoyed this season immensely. And, uh, you know, and you know, like every coach, you know, every coach loves to win. You know, you, all the players. You know, that's that's always the that goal that you set up, set up. But our goal was always let's let's put out a a, a quality of, of play that we can be proud of, that we can look ourselves in the mirror at the end of the day and say, I'm okay with what I put on the court. And that's what they've done. And, and even I mean, you look at our our record. Yeah, we're what six and thirteen right now, but literally we could have a winning record. We had we've had like five, six matches that yeah. could have gone our way. It was so close. And those are matches that, you know, if we didn't have the belief in uh, to fight for each other, I'm not sure we would have been that close. Mm -hmm. Well, you but, look at, you look yeah. at Jeff, some of the, I mean, you've got 30 plus three set matches yeah. in the singles. I mean, that's, if you, that's just unheard of. Yeah. If there's been so many matches that you've had that you go to singles and, and three, four, five of the matches go to that third set. And that yeah. really is a coin flip. Yeah. You know, you get to that super breaker in a third set and, and uh, you get a break here or there and, and you're turning around a lot of those, of those matches. You're right. right. It's, you know, the, the effort is there. It's just, yeah. I think a lot of it is luck, you know, yeah. not necessarily luck, but um, um, just, you know, it's, it, you put yourself in the right position and, yeah. and weren't able to, uh, to, to get the positive result. Yeah, I mean, the, the experience they're getting is invaluable. And knowing that they have played close will, I think, will pay dividends in the future that they'll, they will believe that they can get over the top, even if they've lost you know, some close ones. The fact that they are close um, means that they are good enough, that they can do this. And of course, we're working hard on each of them about improving their games. I mean, just thinking of Brandon, for instance, I mean, uh, we call him BK. It's because uh, we had two Brandons when we came in <laughs> year. So, and BK has been phenomenal, but you wouldn't recognize his game from freshman year to now. Uh, he's just lights out fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and think of this, he's, hit, he's had to take the number one position this year, which is, which is that double-edged sword in this conference, because it's so hard. Um, and he's, but he's competed very well. But then you look at him and Josh and doubles, they, they will finish with a winning record. Yeah. And they've, you know, they've got an outside shot at uh, mm -hmm. even achieving all conference because they are just a fantastic doubles partnership. Um, and BK is just a phenomenal doubles player. Yeah. I mean, just really something. And Josh compliments him so well uh, that they just, they have a blast playing together. Mm -hmm. And that's, that speaks volumes for a team that, you know, was really faced with a challenge at the start that they are, they've met the challenge and Absolutely. they played great. Well, guys, we must have been having fun because the time <laughs> went like that. Uh, we, we, we have to close out here, but Jeff, thanks so much for joining us. Good Absolutely. luck as you close out the season here, mm -hmm. so. All right, and a big thanks as well to our first-time producer, Matt Klosky, today. Flawless, as usual. <laughs> you know, if that whole Makerspace gig doesn't work out, you're always welcome here in the Jerry and Pat Pappenfuss Multimedia Lab. That's going to do it for the Cardinals' Nest. Thanks for watching. Happy Easter, and we'll see you next time.